This video is in response to Uncle Luke's video, and that's the Luke of Luke's Points and Miles, who challenged us credit card content creators to make predictions for the upcoming year. I'm going to cover four different issuers, including Chase, Wells Fargo, Capital One, and American Express. There will be some overlap in this video with some of the other credit card content creators, and I think that's okay because you get to see some of our similarities and some of our differences. With that said, let's move on to my first prediction. The Chase Sapphire Preferred hasn't been revamped since 2021 and let's be honest the revamp it received was more of a refresh and it was pretty disappointing because we caught overlapping categories with the freedom flex and freedom unlimited credit cards and those categories included 5x points on travel purchase through the chase ultimate rewards portal and 3x points on dining Previously, the Sapphire Preferred earned 2x points on dining purchases, but a sense of Freedom Flex and Freedom Unlimited received 3x points in this category. Chase decided to match the two cards rather than beating the two cards, which is something I don't understand since this credit card was once marketed as Chase's go-to dining credit card. The other two categories that came as a result of that refresh were the 3x points on select streaming services and 3x points on online grocery purchases. And then the annual hotel credit was introduced and the 10 percent anniversary point bonus which seemed to be more of a play on words than anything else and actually wasn't very much appreciated by the credit card community so much so that chase has now tucked this away under the additional value with ultimate rewards section of their web page rather than having it as its own line item like it did in the past however it still has its own line item if you use a referral link all of these changes ended up being a bit lackluster for the sapphire preferred which is a decent travel credit card and because of that, I think that Chase is really going to start feeling the pressure to give the Sapphire Preferred a revamp that it actually deserves, especially since Wells Fargo is positioning itself to become a serious travel credit card competitor in 2024. More on that Wells Fargo speculation later on in the video. So I think that we are going to see a few things happen with the Sapphire Preferred. I really don't see an annual fee increase being plausible at this point unless Chase revamps the reward categories because they know that they will get a slew of videos on credit card content creators either canceling the credit card because it isn't worth the increased annual fee or they will see more videos of creators product changing their sapphire preferred credit cards for the sapphire reserve credit card if chase adds reward categories this is what i like to see them add i like for them to expand the online grocery purchases category to include physical in-store purchases and keep it at a 3x multiplier i think it'll be really hard for them to reduce it to a 2x multiplier without getting some negative feedback from the credit card community in addition, I think that Chase should add a gas station category to the Sapphire Preferred. This should be a 3x category because the Chase Inc. Business Cash currently offers 2% back at gas stations. Either way, if we were to get a new reward category, I'd only expect to see one added to the Sapphire Preferred. If the annual fee is increased, Chase will have to add another credit and it'll probably be another travel focused statement credit. I don't see the $50 hotel credit going away, so I think that Chase may add a $50 credit to be used toward travel in their travel portal. That way we can potentially combine it with the $50 hotel credit so you'll be able to get a $100 in value for booking a hotel through Chase Ultimate Rewards, which is more usable than the just the $50 hotel credit. This should be enough to keep the Sapphire Preferred relevant within this ever-changing competitive space of travel credit cards, but at the very least, I think that Chase will really feel the pressure to revamp its Sapphire Preferred. Prediction number two is a revamp to the World of Hyatt credit card lineup. A few months back, surveys floated around to a few lucky people to sort of test the market and just based on the questions, it appears that Hyatt may be interested in bringing a premium level card to their lineup. And this makes a lot of sense because there's the Maria Bonvoy Brilliance and the Hilton Honors Aspire. Both cards are by American Express and Hyatt doesn't currently have an offering to compete in this segment. So we may see a little bit of a revamp to the World of Hyatt credit card lineup because again, just like the Sapphire Preferred, it is a little lackluster. When we take a look at the reward categories on the World of Hyatt credit card, there's really not much offered. The only category that can be useful on a regular basis is the restaurant category where you earn two bonus points. But let's be real, the Sapphire Preferred earns 3x points at restaurants and those points transfer at a one-to-one -one rate into the World of Hyatt program. So unless you're trying to earn a free night by meeting the $15,000 spend requirement each year, then most people would get more use out of the Sapphire Preferred. Beyond that, the other categories such as airline tickets purchased directly from the airline, local transit, 
fitness and gym club memberships typically have a much less transaction frequency. So my prediction will be some sort of revamp to the current world of higher credit card so that it can be more competitive with the Hilton Honors surpassed credit card. If we don't get a dedicated grocery store category with the Sapphire Preferred, I do hope that Chase uses this opportunity to implement a dedicated grocery store category with the world of higher credit card and make it a 3x category. I'd also like to see the base earning rate to be increased to at least a 1.5x earning rate rather than the one point per dollar earning rate. This will be more in line with the Hilton Honors Surpass credit card. As for the premium credit card, if it does come to fruition next year, I don't see it giving us the top status with Hyatt. I can see Hyatt offering as high as the Explorer status with the premium credit card. That way the globalist status doesn't become something that's easily attainable. If we do see a premium credit card from Hyatt with the Explorer status, I'd expect the annual fee to come in at $450, which would be $100 less than the Hilton Honors Aspire card. I'd expect access into priority lounges and maybe $200 in Hyatt Resort credit and a one free night award good for a standard room at a hotel of any category. As for the reward categories, I'd expect it to be competitive with the Hilton Honors Aspire and Maria Bonvoy Brilliant. So I think we'll at least see a base earning of 2x points with this credit card. Finally, I think the world of higher business credit card will remain untouched at least throughout 2024 and maybe it'll see a revamp in 2025. Okay, so we dealt with the two Chase credit cards that I honestly feel are both falling out of popularity but are still respectable options. So let's move on over to American Express with the Amex Gold Card. The last major revamp to the Amex Gold Card was back in 2018 when the Premier Rewards Gold Card was rebranded into the American Express Gold Card that we know and love today. And the increased annual fee went into effect in April of 2019. But since then, we haven't seen much else done with the Amex Gold Card. I think Amex will realize that they need to backtrack a little bit or revisit some of the previous benefits of the Premier Rewards Gold card. Back in 2019, the minimum spend requirement to get the welcome offer was $6,000 in purchases for 60,000 points. And I think we're going to see Amex do away with the $4,000 minimum spend requirement and go back up to the $6,000 minimum spend requirement since the Platinum card has increased its minimum spend requirement to $8,000. I also think we're going to see the earn up to language appear in the welcome offer language, similar to the Amex Platinum since American Express seems to be trying to get control of the credit card turners. I think the base welcome offer will continue to be 60,000 membership reward points with elevated targeted welcome offers of 75,000 and 90,000 membership reward points to be conditioned with that earn up to language. The biggest change that probably will come is an increased annual fee. The last time the annual fee increased, it went up $55, but I am thinking that we'll see between a 75 and $100 increase to that annual fee so anywhere between $325 and $350. I don't think it'll go any higher than that because of the Capital One Venture X. I can tell you if the MS Gold Card matches the Venture X's annual fee then I probably won't keep the Gold Card in my wallet any longer and the Venture X will end up being cross shopped with the MS Gold Card which is something I think Amex will try to avoid. It'll be interesting to see how this plays out. With an increased annual fee I think that we'll see at least one additional credit offered with the Amex Gold Card and for whatever reason I strongly feel like Amex will add the digital entertainment credit to the Gold Card. It seems like Amex doesn't want to appeal to the audience that wants to hold more than one of their charge card products just based on some of the changes we've seen and I really think that a way to discourage this is to continue with offering overlapping statement credits among their library of charge cards. The Gold Card already overlaps with the Platinum Card by offering the Uber credit and there's also a $100 hotel experience credit which I'm not seeing on the main gold card web page anymore so I don't know what's up with that but I'll insert a screenshot here as proof that it exists. Other than that I expect no changes to the reward categories because they still function pretty well and its main competitor the Chase Sapphire Preferred hasn't caught up just as yet. I won't spend much time on this one and the Hilton Honors business 
is definitely going to be revamped in some way. At the very least, we'll see the card getting a redesign to fit in with the newly redesigned Hilton Honors credit cards. I really hope that it gets the aesthetics of the regular Hilton Honors credit cards simply because I don't want another blue credit card in my wallet and I think the white aesthetic looks really sleek and modern. I also think we are going to see an annual fee increase to $150 to match the surpass credit card. Let's face it, I think that the $95 annual fee credit cards are going to be a thing of the past because inflation is a, uh, well I can't say the exitive word here that I want to, but use your imagination. I'm hoping that the card keeps priority pass access, but if it loses it, it's not a big deal because it only includes 10 complimentary lounge visits each year and I have the Venture X that also gives me priority pass lounge access. As for the reward categories, I'm not sure which direction Amex will go with this. The interesting part is while I was researching for this video, the webpage for the Hilton Honors business wasn't showing the 6x reward categories. It only showed the 12x and 3x reward categories. However, I did notice that the 6x reward categories are still included in the fine print. Is it possible that Amex is testing removing these reward categories to see if people would still apply for this credit card if it were to keep its hotel benefits and priority pass lounge access? Time will tell, but that move seems to be strategic, especially since showing all of the benefits of the credit card is very important in attracting new card holders. I'll definitely keep an eye out on this one. Prediction number five belongs to Wells Fargo. I think that Wells Fargo is positioning itself to be a very strong competitor in the credit card space, and if they play their cards right, we're going to see Wells Fargo receiving the same level of buzz that the built MasterCard received. I remember reading an article a few months before the autograph card came out stating that Wells Fargo's goal was to completely revamp their credit card lineup to be competitive in the credit card market, and the only way for Wells Fargo to truly be competitive is to offer valuable transfer partners. Many of you don't know this, but I can say that the marketing teams from at least some of the credit card issuers out there actually do pay attention to our YouTube videos. So if Wells Fargo's team has been conducting market research, what other places better than taking a look at some YouTube videos to see what content creators like to talk about because this means a free advertisement and at the same time, be able to see what people are putting into the comments section. This alone should give them an edge to get this done right and become a serious competitor in the credit card space. I think the autograph journey will crush the Sapphire Preferred if the Sapphire Preferred is left in its current form. In fact, the points guys was able to get confirmation from Wells Fargo that the autograph journey will join the existing autograph card, which means that once transfer partners come into play, the Sapphire Preferred will be at risk of being overshadowed by not one, but two Wells Fargo products. Chase has really left the door wide open for a new player in the space to come behind and take on that mid-tier travel credit card spot. This is really why I feel that Chase will have no choice but to revamp the Sapphire Preferred. The points guys also confirmed that the autograph journey will offer a more lucrative points earning structure than the existing autograph card, which in my mind means that Wells Fargo will also be going head to head with Amex and we may see a direct Amex Gold card competitor. I think a reasonable expectation is to see some 4X reward categories and I don't really expect these categories to overlap with the autograph card. This means that the autograph journey might come with a 4X grocery store category to go head to head with the Amex Gold, probably a 5X multiplier for purchasing travel through a Wells Fargo travel portal, possibly a 3X multiplier for purchases at wholesale clubs and warehouse stores like Target, BJ's, and Walmart, and maybe a 4X multiplier for online shopping. Providing lounge access through the Priority Pass Lounge Network may be a slight possibility depending on the annual fee, but I think that Wells Fargo will focus on providing value and lucrative reward categories. I'm also going to speculate that we may see a new trifecta enter into the space. I'm just not sure whether Wells Fargo will introduce a third autograph card to complete that trifecta or allow the active cash cards cash back to be converted into points by transferring it to one of the autograph cards. If Wells Fargo manages to get Hyatt or American Airlines or both as transfer partners, then this card will be the most hyped up card of 2024. Let's end the video here with the Venture X. I don't think we'll see too much activity with the Venture X. We'll probably see Capital One slightly nerf this card next year, and then the welcome offer may be increased if Wells Fargo offers a very competitive credit card. All right, guys, so those are my predictions for 2024, and I feel like I may get a little bit of this right, but I may just be wrong with all of them. I just realized that all of these cards on this list were travel-focused credit cards, and if you're looking to earn points to redeem for free travel by getting some of these credit cards, 
then be sure to watch this video next of the untold truth of free travel. With that, if you made it to the end, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. But as always, you deserve a high five, so come on over and get your high five.